Hi guys, hope you're all okay. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me today for another video. I thought I would do a slightly different style of video today, um, a bit of a change of format. Um, I'm going to do a review on the Retivis RT82 DMR radio, but I thought I'd strip out a lot of the stuff I usually put in my other reviews and just sort of give you more information and make them a little bit shorter because I understand that sort of like 20 minutes for a review or 25, 30 minutes for review is quite um, quite lengthy. So I thought I'd strip it down a bit and just see how it turns out. So if you prefer this type of video, then drop me a comment in the box below and let me know. Um, so yeah, today we're looking at the Retivis RT82. This is a DMR handset from Retivis. And um, we're going to have a quick look at what's inside the box. We'll have a look at some of the settings. We'll go through all the features on this radio. Um, I'm not going to go into the programming because programming for DMR is all very similar. And I've covered it in loads of videos and... You know, again, I, I really don't feel that 10 minutes on programming DMR or showing you the DMR software is going to be beneficial, um, really. So I thought I would just skip that little bit out. But again, um, let me know in the box below. Um, what we'll do is we'll do a little test on this radio as well and just see how it performs. So I've got everything that's inside the box here in front of me. We've got the user manual there. Um, which is quite a thick user manual. Plenty of information in there. We've got the charging base. Uh, the drop-in charging base for the radio. We've got a belt clip and some screws. We've got the battery, which is a 2200 milliamp hour battery. We've got the antenna and we've got the mains uh, power lead there. And depending on which country you're in, you, you might need a adapter. And then, of course, we've got the radio itself. So just some of the features on this radio. It's a dual band radio. It covers 136 to 174 megahertz on VHF and 400 to 480 megahertz on UHF. It has an output power of 5 watts. It's tier 1 and tier 2 compatible on DMR, so it is compatible with most DMR systems um, for um, slot 1 and slot 2. It's IP67 dustproof and waterproof. Um, you can store up to 3,000 channels in this, which is um, quite good for a DMR radio. Uh, you can store 10,000 contacts. Um, and the list can be imported from various websites that do um, those CSV files with DMR IDs uh, in a database. So you can just import them in the programming software. Um, so yeah, 10,000 contacts is, is a hell of a lot. Um, this has got the record feature. So a lot of Retivist radios have got the record feature now. So you can record up to 8 hours and you can play those back on DMR. It's got the usual features like CTCSS and DCS, an emergency alarm, Vox, password lock, and you can set the programming software um, to have a password as well, so it can't be programmed without the password. It's got dual standby, so you can monitor two frequencies at the same time. Uh, and as I said earlier, the battery is a 2200 milliamp hour lithium ion battery, so that'll give you about 8 to 12 hours of normal use and a standby time, uh, Retivist claims, of 150 hours. It's got the usual display that most of these types of radios have, so that familiar familiarity is a lot easier. Um, if you can use a lot of the other DMR radios, you'll be able to use this one. It's quite simple. Um, it has a timeout timer. It's got f um, five user-defined buttons, so it's got three buttons on the side. Um, one on the top, which doubles as an emergency button, and then you've got P1 and P2 on the front, which is quite handy. So there's plenty of programmable buttons there to do different functions should you need them. You can send SMS messages on this radio, um, so like you can with a lot of other DMR radios. So if you don't want to talk over voice, you can just send SMS messages, and you can set predefined messages up in the programming software. It does have basic encryption as well and remote stun, remote kill and remote activate so um, if you're in part of a network and the radio goes missing or gets stolen you can kill it or stun it and then you can uh, bring it back to life when it's recovered and as I said earlier you can program this via PC quite easily. So just switching the radio on. Um, you can see we've got the usual uh, layout on the screen there, quite straightforward, very similar to the TYT MD380 and all other Retivist radios, um, which makes it nice and simple. And you can see on the front there we've got those P1 and P2 programmable buttons. And on the side you can see the up and down buttons there, I've set them to cycle through the zone, so we're just going to go to a zone that's got some DMR channels in it. And in the middle, you can see we've got a rollerball there for navigation. So those arrows aren't buttons. There's like a rollerball in the middle, which is lit up with an LED, which I thought was quite a nice feature, something I've not seen on any other DMR radio I'd come across before. Um, and, of course, you can use the P1 and P2 buttons for up and down, left and right, should you need to. Um, but if we just go into the menu there, you can see we've got contact settings. 
and I'm just using the roller ball there to navigate through the menu and then press the um, ball down to select a contact and then we can just press back to go back to the previous menu we've got scan and um, zones so we can go in the zone list there and you can use the roller ball to cycle through the different zones so I'm just going to select GB7MR there and put that zone on and um, that will be the zone that we're in You've got messaging, a call log, utilities, so we've got radio settings in there, so you can see we've got talk around settings, tones and alerts, uh, power output, backlight, squelch, intro screen, uh, keypad lock, LED indicator, password lock, the record function there, so you can turn record on and off. Clock mode, so you can set that to uh, channel mode or memory mode. Voice enunciation, private call match, group call match, uh, menu hang time, TX mode. Um, so yeah, again, all all quite simple. The only thing you can't do in this is you can't program this from the front end. So with some other DMR radios, you can program them fully from the front end. Um, in this one, you can't actually do that. So you can't select your colour code, talk group and slot and frequency from the um, keypad um, at this moment in time. I'm not sure if there'll be a firmware or software update in the future that will allow that, but at the moment you can't do that. But it's no big deal, as I say, the DMR software is very similar to any other DMR software for Retivis and, well, most other DMR radios out there anyway, so um, there's no need to worry about that. Okay, so what I think we'll do now is we'll go out and we'll do a short range test just to see how this radio performs. We're about four miles from home and in between me is a housing estate and um, a small hill so quite challenging conditions for a handheld radio in quite an urban environment. Um, so I'm going to put a couple of calls back to base. Uh, receiving radio is the AOR DB1 scanner um, connected to a collinear on the roof of the house. Um, the actual collinear is lower than the horizon line where I'm stood now because of the terrain around here so uh, let's hope we get back to base. Uh, this is M3 HHY Mike 3 Hotel Hotel Yankee Mobile on DMR Call Channel. Uh, testing back to base 12345 54321 on the Retivis RT82. Uh, this is M3 HHY M3 HHY on the Retivis RT82 at location 1, 4 miles from home. Testing audio on the AOR DV1. One two three four five five four three two one. Uh, this is M3 HHY Mike 3 Hotel Hotel Yankee Mobile on DMR Call and Channel. Uh, testing back to base. One two three four five five four three two one on the Retivis RC eighty two. Uh, this is M3 HHY M3 HHY on the Retivis RC eighty two at location one four miles from home. Testing audio on the AOR DV one. One two three four five five four three two one. Right, what we'll do is we'll head to a second location now. We'll see how we get on there as well. Okay, so we've come to some local high ground, my usual spot, which is Werneth Low, and there's a really good takeoff to the left of me here. So to the west, there's a really good takeoff, but to the east and behind me and to the north, it's surrounded by hills, and my QTH is um, behind the hill so again um, out of sight completely and blocked by um, quite a bit of a hill but we'll see how we get on back to base m3 hhy mobile testing the retivis rt82 the retivis rt82 from werner's low in hyde uh, back to base one two three four five five four three two one m3 hhy on dmr simplex uh, testing the retivis rt82 one two three four five five four three two one. Back to the AOR DV one over. M three H H Y mobile testing the Retivis R T eighty two. The Retivis R T eighty two. From Werner's Low in Hyde. Uh, back to base. One two three four five five four three two one. M three H H Y on DMR Simplex uh, testing the Retivis R T eighty two. One two three four five five four three two one. Back to the AOR DV one over. 
Okay, so we're going to head back home now and we'll listen to the recordings and see how we got on. Okay, so I think I'll wrap that one up here. Um, some really nice features on this radio. I think the um, IP67 dustproof and waterproofing is a nice feature. Um, the fact that you can input 10,000 contacts and you can import CSV files from external sources into the software is a nice feature as well. Um, quite a chunky battery on it, it's a 2200 milliamp hour battery. Um, it's quite good, you're going to get quite a bit of use out of that compared to some other radios. Um, it's got all the usual features of Retivis radio such as the encryption, the record function, things like that. Um, the only thing is um, that other Retivis radios have the edge on is that you can't program it from the front end, but it's no big deal. Um, we had that with a lot of earlier DMR radios and even some of the existing DMR radios that are coming out now, you still can't program them from the front end. That's um, quite a bonus at the moment. But there are other Retivis radios where you can program them from, from the front end, so it's no big deal. And as I said earlier, the programming software on this is really straightforward and virtually identical to any other that I've used, so programming isn't a um, massive issue. Okay, so we'll leave that one there. I know it was a bit of a shorter video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know what you think of the new format or whether you like it or whether you'd rather go back to the longer videos where they're sort of 20, uh, 25, 30 minutes. Let me know in the comments below. Um, any other comments, suggestions or questions, drop them in the box below and I'll get back to you. And if you haven't already clicked the subscribe button, then make sure you click the subscribe button. Uh, plenty more coming in the new year, guys. Got a lot of videos planned, so um, stay tuned for those. And all that's left to say is 7-3. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Oh, while we're here, it'd be rude not to check out this Hutchison uh, 3G uh, UK cellular site. There you go. This is just off the uh, off the main road. A few panel antennas up there, and um, some um, looks like point-to-point -point microwave links. See the back there. So there's all the feeders coming out. Right, we'll go on to the second location now.